Hello, world, and welcome to episode 5 of Kerbal Racket School. This episode will cover stability and control. I also want to note this episode is going to be a quick one, as there's no hands on section, nor will there be real life science time. I'm also talking really fast, if you didn't notice. Wibbly robbity rickety rockets. What's the deal? Do you suffer from shakiness, spinniness, stickiness, and unplanned rapid explosive disassembliness? Well, you need more stability and control. How do you get stability and control? Just follow these steps. Step 1. Add more struts. Seriously, just strut everything. Struts are super light and no drag, so go crazy, strut everything. Anything that's kinda loose, strut it. Scratch that, strut it twice. Three times. Who cares? Strut your stuff. Turn your rocket from this into this. Amazing! Okay, step 2. Be a smart ASAS. ASAS? Or ASAS? ASAS or ASAS? AS or SSSSSSSS? Whoa, 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 confusing. Explain that. Okay, I got you covered. ASAS is this. SAS is that. Oh, but sometimes AS looks like this. Or this. Wait. Let me restart. Does your ship have an attitude problem? Do you see a nosedive in its future? Sometimes you gotta correct your ship's wild side by using SAS. SAS, or Stability Assistance System, does exactly what it says. Press T to turn it on, and it will add corrective torque to keep your ship pointed in that direction. Each module you put on your ship will increase the amount of force the SAS can use. There's also the ASAS, short for Advanced Stability Assistance System. This baby won't add its own force, but will make use of every part of your ship that can control attitude. Wait, 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 other parts of your ship? Step 3! RCS, winglets, control systems, gimbly engines, tigers and bears, oh my! Okay, so there's a whole team of parts you can use to control your ship's direction. Your capsule is actually one of these parts. It creates its own torque via magic, or gyroscopes, same thing. This is how you control your ship when you're not using any of these other parts. Remember in episode 1 when I talked about thrust vectoring? When an engine can change the direction of its thrust, it has a gimbal range. Basically, the gimbal range is how much it can move around. By vectoring the thrust, you can turn your ship around. This is very helpful when you have a ginormous rocket in space and you need to flip it around the other way. If you just apply a very little bit of throttle, the engine helps turn the ship around. Winglets are like little wings. You put them on your ship, and they work like gimbling engines, except only in atmospheres. Control surfaces are really only supposed to be used on planes, but I guess you could, um, uh, I mean, no, I mean, you, uh, like... Yeah, they're meant for planes. Finally, there is RCS, or Reaction Control System. Your RCS is a bunch of tiny little engines on your ship that can control attitude or even translate your ship. To use your RCS thrusters, you need RCS fuel on your ship. There are two types of RCS thrusters, the thruster blocks and the linear thrusters. The thruster blocks are better for attitude control, whereas the port linear thrusters are better for translation maneuvers. To use the RCS in flight, you have to press the R key to toggle on the system. Now, along with your augmented attitude controls, you can use the H, N, I, K, J, and L keys to translate your ship forward, back, up, down, left, and right, respectfully. All of these systems can be used manually or by the advanced SAS to keep your ship steady. That's all for this time, and I will see you out there! <gasps>